Coming up on Open for Business, South Bend Chamber of Commerce President Jeff Bray talks about the economic development in Michigan. Vincy visits Benny's Sweet Shop to see all the treats available this holiday season. Charlie chats with Michiana Crime Stoppers about how your tips help solve crimes. And Brian Mounts of the AARC talks about how they help people overcome addictions. Stay with us, Michiana. We're open for business. open for business. We enjoy talking with the CEO and president of the South Bend Regional Chamber of Commerce, Jeff Ray, about developments. And it's good to talk to you again. Nice to be with you, Charlie. Thank you. I want to talk about economic development. And there's several ways you can go here uh, to let folks know about what's happening. And it's very exciting. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously projects like the electric vehicle battery plant have got a lot of attention, but it's important to know there's just a ton of other activity happening, too. So in Mishawaka, for example, they just broke ground on the mill phase two. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll add 350 new apartments uh, downtown uh, Mishawaka. Beacon Health Systems building a 10-story tower downtown South Bend, a $250 wow. million dollar investment. New owner at Verbio, or the old ethanol plant. Uh, where they're going to invest $230 million uh, out there. Uh, if you're on the bypass, you see the northwest side of South Bend, some um, considerable uh, industrial space happening out there. You're seeing housing happening around campus and a lot of different places. So, th so the good news overall economy is there's a lot of activity happening, a lot of work if you're in the um, construction trades or stuff. And then what we hope more than anything is uh, future job opportunities for our community. Let's talk about job opportunities and how the schools here can grow with the growth. And, and what, when you talk to school leaders, when you talk to these business development, what are some of the things you're learning that in the future, into the 2030s and beyond, we can even improve or develop within schools? You know, it's interesting. I, th I think this leads well into this discussion we're having about it, the development of a countywide career center. We're the largest county in, in Indiana without a career center. Okay. And each of the schools is doing a terrific job in career right. and technical education but it's hard sometimes to do it alone. They can't offer the yeah. latest state-of-the-art, most sophisticated equipment and such. So I think in the next two years, you'll see the development of a career center that will include uh, people like South Bend Community Schools and Penn and Mishawaka mm -hmm. and the Catholic schools and others all have a chance to plug into that, which we think gives um, students a better platform to plug into some of these mm -hmm. emerging industries or technologies that, that exist out there. They'll still be part of their original school and take core classes there, right. but then have this career center opportunity opportunity that kind of elevates their skill level and gets them better uh, prepared for a job opportunity. When you talk about the future, uh, even going 20 years, how is South Bend and the region situated for that growth? We think good. In fact, we think that the um, the preference is going to be communities like the South okay. Bend, Mishawak area. And I, I would say um, size matters. There was a, a period where everybody wanted to go to the big city and oh. and be part of that. But I, but uh, but post pandemic, the smaller towns. The I'm, I'm seeking quality place. I'm seeking good neighborhoods. I'm seeking mm -hmm. good schools. I'm seeking a, a good job where I can make a living. Mm -hmm. And and so we're seeing um, a lot of investment in quality place in particular where uh, where we. Uh, track those families that, that want to come back. So I think good, we've got to continue to evolve. And, and, and I'll just use an example. We're a heavy auto part manufacturer, for example, right now. As autos change and they go more electric oh, yeah. and less, they need a lot less parts. And so our companies have to be evolving. And I think I, I sense from being in those companies that they're evolving, they're preparing for that next generation in some of those emerging industries. When you talk about uh, young people, uh, as they go through school and what these employers are looking for beyond knowing a skill. What are some of the other, sometimes they're called soft skills, but team player attitude. When you talk to business developers, what is really important in the future there? Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting because I, I will tell you, they ask that question more than any other question, oh. probably in terms of, you know, they used to ask about taxes and utilities yeah. and um, transportation and all those kind of mm -hmm. things. Education workforce, top two questions. Now they all want to know about, um, w again, the, the basic skill levels, kind of what classes. I'm yeah. telling them how many are enrolled in fifth grade and 
project lead the way and how many are in seventh grade doing this and how many in ninth grade are, are doing that. But, but yeah, more importantly, it's the, it's the work ethic, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and perhaps what made our area so strong a long time ago was that, that good, hardworking Midwest yeah. work ethic. And, and so I think they're hoping um, that we can teach them most of the skills that they need. Yes. Um, uh, workforces have become very automated, but we still need critical yeah. thinkers. So I think critical thinking, problem solving, some of those things become part of that to go along with this attitude thing. So employers are also recognizing they need to play a, a bigger role in terms oh. of developing this. I think th there was a period of time where they mm -hmm. sort of let, let somebody else train them and then <laughs> give them to me ready to go. And they said, no, I need to um, be a, have a bigger role in doing that. Jeff, let's uh, switch gears and a little bit about your background, family background. Uh, you were, used to be mayor of Mishawaka and now in your 14th year uh, leading South Bend Regional Chamber. But your family background taught you a lot. And, and talk about what it was and what you've taken from it to this day. Yeah, absolutely. So we were, uh, my, my parents, grandparents, great-grandparents were all entrepreneurs in the oh. area. So we had a drugstore in Bourbon, Indiana, down in Marshall County, and yeah. a drugstore in Mishawaka uh, that was a fixture near Mishawaka High School for some 50 plus years. And so I grew up working in the drugstore. I wanted to be the next generation to run the drugstore. But I saw my, my grandparents and parents mm -hmm. and great-grandparents all labor every single day to try to provide great value, customer service. I think I think people work retail get, have a different perspective in terms of the customer service piece and such. So so I think it's that work ethic more than anything. We were we were a store open nine to nine, six days a week, one to six on Sundays. There weren't a lot of uh, times for for breaks, but. Uh, but, I, but it, it, it inspires me in what I'm doing now because I'm meeting those yeah. entrepreneurs like my mom and dad, like my grandparents yes. who are starting businesses, who have an idea, who are trying to make a difference in the community. And there's a lot of them. And, uh, and so to get a chance to work on behalf of them is pretty exciting for me. The South Bend Regional Chamber of Commerce President and CEO, Jeff Ray, we enjoy talking to you from time to time here on the show. Any final thoughts as we approach 2024 and uh, words you can share for the folks out there watching? Yeah, I, th I think be encouraged. I think, you know, that if you're watching national news, everybody's worried about um, whether it be elections or mm. UAW strike yeah. or inflation or whatever. The indicators we're seeing are really positive. I think to hang in there and, and I think 2024 is going to be a great year. And again, for folks that want to follow up and learn more about the Chamber, what's the best way? Yeah, sbrchamber.com links SBR. to all of our social media platforms. Uh, sign, uh, you can uh, see where our events are. We hope that uh, you'll uh, take a chance to- And you've got a episode. podcast going there. I do, we have a Behind the Region podcast just yeah. as we're looking to tell stories, if oh, you will. Uh, you know, How do we dive deeper into businesses and help them share their stories? And, and hopefully we can inspire other business leaders. So look for the Behind the Region podcast on uh, most major podcast platforms. Always good to talk with you, Jeff. Your enthusiasm is contagious. Great to see you, Charlie. Thank you so much. Thank you for being on Open for Business. Mineral Concentrate has been a bestseller for years, and now we're excited to announce a new low price of only $19.95. This all-natural supplement is packed with essential minerals, providing your body the nutrients needed to function at its best. Improve your energy, support your immune system, or simply maintain your overall health and wellness. With our new low price, there's no better time than now. Visit mhclife.com to get your bottle of Mineral Concentrate today. Hi, I'm Vinci with Open for Business, and today we're in downtown Niles at Venny's. Now for all your Christmas shopping, we all know that chocolate is at the top of the list. I'm gonna be a kid in a candy shop, literally. Let's go inside and see what they have to offer. So I'm on the inside of Venny's now, and the smell is amazing when you walk in. It's absolutely delicious. Now I'm with Linda, the general manager, and Linda, you guys have 17 different flavors of candy canes? Yes, we make them on site. Uh, we actually have three people making them now. 17 flavors are new in this year as bubble gum. Oh. We of course have all the traditional peppermint, spearmint, wintergreen, and all sorts of fruity ones. And then some unusual ones that you don't necessarily find anywhere like anise and clove. Can you tell us about some of the things that you have to offer here? Sure, well, we have 30 some different flavors of truffles, mm -hmm. our signature Benny mints. We have our creams and our nut clusters, caramels, toffees, we have a sugar-free section, yeah. and then we're back at the fudge. On top, we have all sorts of great novelty stocking stuffers for Christmas, molded Santas, 
peanut butter trees, Rice Krispie trees, you know, a great assortment. And I know there's gonna be a lot of people shopping for Christmas. What are some of your Christmas favorites that people buy? Well, we have some special boxes that we do for Christmas that are just really fun and seasonal, like our Christmas tree boxes. We have them in two different sizes. We pack um, special assortments with a Christmas theme. It'll have holiday pieces in it, and they're just very popular. Now, I noticed when I walked into that you guys have unbelievable fudge here. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that. We make 18 different flavors of fudge. We'll bring in some seasonal ones for Christmas, like candy cane, of course, mm -hmm. um, maybe eggnog. But we always have the basics, like chocolate and chocolate peanut butter, and it's just really good fudge. So something for everybody Definitely. when it comes to that. And the amazing thing is absolutely everything is handmade. Yes. You guys are just making it by hand. It's fresh and probably melts in your mouth, which I'm going to find yes, out. Yes, we, we cook and produce at least six days out of the week, if not seven. All of this yummy chocolate is made on site, Definitely. right? Definitely, yes. Okay, and today I hear that we might get a sneak peek as to how you make toffee. Right, Dakota's back. She has started a batch of toffee, which is basically butter and sugar oh. and uh, <laughs> we'll take a look at that in the back okay yeah. i'm excited so what are we going to see right now well dakota uh, has melted the butter and just added the sugar and now we need to get it up to 264 degrees before the next ingredient goes in. oh that is so cool looking at that copper kettle yes yes everything we cook is in these very very old copper kettles This yeah. bar ensures that the toffee is the same thickness throughout. Oh, wow. As soon as they have it spread, we're going to remove these bars, and it has to be cut immediately. Really? Yep. Toffee is one of our most popular items we make. Oh, I can imagine. It we looks have amazing. Chocolate covered, sea salted, and almond butter crunch, which is coated in chocolate and then rolled in crushed almonds. After she cuts it, we're gonna put a fan on it to let it cool, and then we'll break it up. It goes so fast. Mm -hmm. I'm just amazed at how quickly it comes together. Can I? Of course. Okay, so Linda, where are we at back here? Well, we are in our dipping room. And these are our melters. So this one is full of milk chocolate, and this one's full of dark chocolate. So Sandy's about to dip some of the toffee into some of the chocolate. Yes. So as soon as she's ready, she's going to probably dip milk chocolate. So now, Linda, a big portion of what you guys do is corporate orders. Especially during the Christmas season. We actually started getting corporate orders in September this year, and wow. we're still getting phone calls and taking more. Oh my goodness. Now, when it comes to those corporate orders, you can fill any type of order that they need, right? Definitely. We um, can pack boxes that we don't normally have in the store. Like, we just put out 200 four-piece boxes. Wow. All salted caramel. Oh. Very delicious. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So if they want, help with their corporate giveaway and the yummy pieces that you guys have, they just need to contact Ev you. Everybody likes chocolate. It makes <laughs> a very easy gift. So of course right now it's the Christmas season and everybody's going to be buying for that. But you guys have special things that you do year round. What are some oh, of the highlights? Definitely. Well, after Christmas, obviously Valentine's is a huge mm -hmm. season and we probably have the best selection of heart shaped boxes of anybody. I bet. And then we transition right into Easter with molded oh. bunnies in all shapes and sizes. After that, it's Mother's Day. Everybody, oh. moms love chocolate. Yes, please. Yep. And then in the summer, it's just normal summer, a lot of fudge in summer. Yeah. And then in the fall, we start with thousands of caramel apples. Oh, so wow. we're, we, we're busy year round. What are some of the ways that they can get a hold of you? Well, they can go to our website. They can call us for special orders. They can, you know, buy a gift certificate to give to somebody else. Oh, that's perfect. That would be a great stocking stuffer as well. Definitely. And Definitely. what's the phone number to call? 269-684-1323. That's fantastic. And you're open seven days a week. What we are, are the hours again? Monday through Saturday, 9 to 7, and Sundays 12 to 5. And they can always find you on Facebook, too, to find out yes. more. Yes. Yeah, we put all lots of stuff on Facebook. Okay, perfect. And you guys are located right downtown Niles, mm -hmm. so it makes Two, it super easy. Yep. 228 East Main Street on the corner of 3rd 
Orchard in Maine were really easy to find. All right, so make sure that you stop by. Trust me, you will not regret it. Venny's in downtown Niles. Jesus' instructions were simple. We are to be a light for all to see. Spread the Word distributes God's Word, the light of Christ, with intention and focus. We need your help to do more and to reach more people. Visit the new BiblesForAll.org website to partner with us and help shine that light. BiblesForAll.org. Give today to share the enduring Word of God and help share God's love and spread the Word. Our community, your call. Charlie, back again for Open for Business, talking Michiana Crime Stoppers. 40 years of making a difference. And in studio, we have a very special guest coordinator, Lieutenant Kayla Miller. And Kayla, folks out there know about Crime Stoppers. I wanna know some recent stats that back up what's been happening over four decades and recently. Okay, so I'll try to break it down real quick for you here. So number of total cases, whether it be yes. um, warrants or cases solved, we've hit over 11,400 cases. Um, total arrests since 1983 has been 8,639 arrests. Uh, number that I like to talk about is rewards that have been authorized, 1,232,685. And if that wasn't enough, we've helped recover in stolen property and narcotics just in Michiana mm -hmm. since 1983, $18,217,653 worth. So yes, it works. Significant. I came to this community in 1988. So Sam Walsh was the director. Then Dave Shock, Cindy Kilgore, you are the fourth. Mm -hmm. As lieutenant coordinator, you have taken the baton and, and really moving it on. Give folks a history lesson a little bit of Crime Stoppers nationally, South Bend, and then Michiana. So it started in 1976 okay. in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh -huh. uh, the detective was Greg McAleese, brand new detective, mm -hmm. and he caught a homicide case that yep. went cold real quick. Okay. And so before he was a detective, he actually was in the media world. And so he reached out to a few friends and old colleagues and said, hey, I have this idea. I wanna put together a reenactment of mm -hmm. this case and show it to the public yeah. and see if we can get some leads mm -hmm. about it. And he and his partner actually manned the phone lines themselves, okay. brought, put together the cash yeah. from their pockets and offered a reward. Wow. And sure enough, they received okay. uh, information that helped solve yeah. that case, as well as information about other cases that were cold in that area. So that's how Crime Stoppers was born in the, in, in the U.S. Fast forward a few years, 1983 uh -huh. is when our program began okay. here in Michiana known then as South Bend Area right. Crime Stoppers. Fast forward a few years, we changed the name to Michiana Crime Stoppers to encompass more of who yeah. we are because we do cover 12 counties in the Michiana area. Lieutenant Miller, let's talk about what kind of cases, crimes do you work and how the people get involved? Yes, so we only cover felony crimes. So it has to be a felony crime okay. for us to feature it mm -hmm. um, or a felony warrant. Mm -hmm. We will take information about misdemeanors and pass it on, but it is not eligible for a reward. Mm -hmm. We have to focus on those felony crimes and those felony fugitives. Those are the ones that are eligible for rewards anywhere from $300 up to $2,500. You've had changes with the times and recent incentive changes. Explain that. Yes, so our speedy reward. So what, what is that? That is a reward for someone who already has a warrant. Police have already identified what crime they've committed and a warrant's been issued for their arrest. If your tip leads to their arrest, it used to be $200 and now it's $300. If you provide a, uh, I'm sorry, a tip yeah. about a case that is actually being solved, so you've got vital information about a case, um, and our board of directors votes on that, mm -hmm. then that can go up to $2,500. Oh. But we have a couple um, special rewards in there. So one is our victory over violence. Okay. If it is involves gun violence in any fashion of a mm -hmm. felony, it's automatically one thousand dollars. The board does not have to vote anymore. So as soon as your reward or as soon as your tip 
leads to that solving, then we can authorize that reward. If it's a homicide tip, it used to be $1,000, and we just uh, upgraded that to $2,500. Outstanding. MichianaCrimestoppers.com is the website. Follow them on Facebook, social media. Let's talk about how the community can get involved. So, of course, we're always looking for tips about felony crimes yes. and fugitives. That's number one. But not everyone has that information. So there's still ways for you to help. Obviously, then, what we're looking for is share our stuff on social media. Um, every single time you share it, that means that someone else maybe sees that. Yes. And before you know it, someone that you know, maybe know someone who knows somebody, that's, and you're the catalyst that provides the information we need. So that's number one. But secondly, we really need your support financially. We're a nonprofit, and so that over $1 million we paid out, we have to raise that money ourselves. And so every year we have two events. They're shredding events. Okay. So you're able to protect yourself against uh, identity theft by supporting Michiana Crime Stoppers yes. with a donation. So it's a win-win for everyone. So protect yourself and donate to Michiana Crime Stoppers, which helps pay for all of these rewards that are staying right here in Michiana. Lieutenant Miller, in our, our final seconds here, what's a message you would like to say to the folks out there about how they can make a difference? Uh, I'd always say that no puzzle piece is too small. So yes. I apply this to investigations when we're looking for all the information and when we, as Michiana Crime Stoppers, puts information mm -hmm. out there and asking for help, it's usually that one missing puzzle piece that we're looking for. But you're also the puzzle piece to our community yes. and the entire program. And so every little piece that we put in is, is makes that puzzle whole. So you mm -hmm. always hold that puzzle piece. Four decades, it is outstanding to get the very latest on Michiana Crime Stoppers. Facebook, be sure to follow them there, michianacrimestoppers.com. Thank you, Lieutenant Miller, for being here on Open for Business. Thanks so much for having us. Mounts. He joins us from the Alcohol and Addictions Resource Center. And Brian, I imagine at a place like yours, you're used to helping treat people, but the idea is to probably not have to treat anybody at all. What do you do in terms of substance abuse prevention? Yeah, thanks for having me, Chuck. Uh, absolutely correct. You know, our goal is to try to prevent it from happening in the first place. And we do that through a lot of different methods. We partner with other organizations in the community to provide prevention programs. Uh, we also do a lot of environmental campaigns and social media campaigns to try to reach a broad audience as well. So our goal is to educate people on the dangers and the risks of substance abuse and uh, to try to find protective factors, uh, in other words, activities or ways that people can get involved positively in the community uh, that will prevent them from picking up in the first place. So when you talk about education, how does that take place? So some of our education is literally going into schools and providing evidence-based programs uh, that run one to two weeks. So we'll embed ourselves into a health class, for example, mm -hmm. and we'll spend two weeks with students talking about life skills or different ways to avoid using substances and educating them on different substances as well. Uh, we also do it through information dissemination, so we pass out literature, we go to community events, we do speaking engagements, and again, with the social media and the environmental campaigns, we'll do billboard campaigns, TV commercials, social media, whatever way we can get the message out there, whether we're trying to reach parents, how to talk to their kids, or we're trying to reach youth and, and get them more involved in positive things, uh, we kind of take it from a, a multi-tiered approach. Despite your best efforts, problems will occur. 
and then it's time for intervention. So what happens then? So we have licensed clinicians at AARC that will meet with individuals and families and basically assess whether or not they uh, meet criteria mm. for a substance use disorder. And, and if they do, we will recommend treatment or a series of classes that, that they can help um, kind of steer them towards a path to recovery. Uh, in some instances, people don't meet criteria, but we still encourage them through literature and different resources to maybe curb their drinking or to look at um, uh, what substances they're using and how often. So tell me about this assessment and, and the criteria that are involved in case somebody's watching who says, hey, maybe I know somebody that needs some help. Yeah, so the process usually takes about an hour or two, and our, it's, it's a simple process of the clinician meeting with the individual and, and doing sort of a one-on-one -on -one interview with them, asking them about their, their past use, their current use, um, mental health questions, personal questions, to kind sure. of assess where they're at as an individual. And then there's a written screening that they take, which is then scored based on their answers to determine whether or not they meet different levels of criteria for a substance use disorder. So by combining those two, the interview and the assessment piece, uh, the clinician can determine what the next path should be. And the clinician comes through this and decides to make a referral to treatment. Is that done in that same facility or is that a referral to a, an outsourced agency? So it's all outsourced. We, um, we do not do treatment ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're not affiliated with one institution or another. We send people where we feel is the best fit for them. Uh, for some people, it's geographically. They need to be local. Uh, they don't have transportation, whatever reason, they can't go somewhere far away. You see commercials all the time for treatment facilities out in California, right. Florida, all over the country. Uh, so some people want to stay local. Some people, maybe local isn't a good fit. Maybe they need a, a more intensive program that's offered outside of our community. So their job is to figure out what the right location and the right treatment is for each individual. And I imagine this requires then for you to have a partnership with a number of different agencies and organizations in order to achieve this. Yeah, we are constantly working with different treatment facilities, different hospitals, different medical groups, uh, different organizations even within our community that are dealing with similar issues or, or issues that are related to social services. So a lot of the work that we do, we couldn't do without those partnerships, those collaborations, and um, being able to work with each other uh, and help each other out. So if somebody watching needs to get in contact with you, how do they do that? So they can go to our website, which is aarcinfo.org. They can call us at 574-234-6024, and they can also find us on uh, Facebook as well. Let's give you that website one more time. It's aarcinfo.org. We know you're working daily to make the right choices. MHC Life is here to help by offering supplements and materials like the Super Heart Pack. Included is mineral concentrate, Soluc, omega-3, and vitamin D3. The Super Heart Pack is an excellent way to boost your immunity, combat fatigue, and provide overall maximum heart health. Order today for only $49.95. Visit mhclife.com or call 1-800-965-2345. Thanks for watching. If your business would like to be featured on an upcoming episode, email us at openforbusiness at whmetv46.com. We'll see you next time. We're Open for Business.